Hello and welcome to another edition of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem, a show where we answer your most pressing questions about the most recent episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved, which was William Desmond Taylor. All the questions we're answering today came from you guys via our BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and our BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page. Let's start it on over in Grand City. Here's from Headphone Actor. Surprised Ryan didn't hit us up with a mob theory. Was there a reason why? I thought about that. There wasn't a mob theory that I found credible enough, but I did somewhat include one in the Mabel Norman theory when I suggested that maybe she herself didn't murder him, but people associated with her and the drug, you know, the drug movement in Hollywood would have done him. He was a crusader in terms of eliminating drugs from Hollywood. So that seems a tangentially related to I'd the I'd say mob. that's tangentially related to the mob. Mob usually has their not, fingers in the drug pot. This comes from Whitney Gomez uh, on Facebook. Another observation, some also speculate that Charlotte Shelby could have dressed like a man and committed the crime. She did after all mention the murder to her chauffeur the next morning at 7.30, an hour before Taylor's body would even be discovered and Paramount would have good reason to help cover up the crime as Mary Miles Minter was considered to be their next ingenue and therefore they may have wanted to protect both her reputation and also Taylor's reputation as some do believe they may have had an affair due to her panties being found at his apartment. The, even though there was a man witnessed on the scene who could say that uh, Charlotte Shelby wasn't clever enough to just disguise herself. And it does make sense that the studio would try and cover up this scandal because Mary Miles Minter being Charlotte Shelby's daughter, this would be bad. Sort of like our choose your own adventure here. You got a lot of uh, little pieces that allow you to fill in the rest of the story, I guess as is the case with any unsolved case. But this one is particularly, yeah, a lot of, lot of different things that could have happened here. I don't buy that the studio interfered merely because they wanted to cover up the fact that he was maybe a homosexual. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense for me to warrant studio involvement. I guess the times were different back then, but it seems like a risky move to implicate yourself possibly in a crime I just mean, to cover that up. It's a lot to insert yourself into a murder investigation. Yeah. And the only, this is the only like, uh, I think suspect that were, where it makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, so good, uh, good cue. That's a, that's a detective mind on you. Detective Gomez. Gomi. Gomi. Breaking, Breaking bad. bad. Yeah. I like memes, I guess, says. <laughs> sure. Why do you two think Hollywood was, and sometimes still is, so corrupt? People with money, people with power, they're gonna abuse it. That's what happens. Yeah, I think uh, it's unfortunately human nature that once you come into a situation where you do have a lot of power, you go a little bit on a trip. It's not exclusive to Hollywood. People in power are usually a little shady. Yeah. I mean, Hollywood just happens to have a lot of rich people in, in a small vicinity. With inflated egos. Yeah. Oh no, I'm just gonna, I mean. <laughs> Tori Alexander for the next question. For the Q&A, what if Taylor's jilted ex-wife or one of his children did it? He abandoned the family and maybe they found out where he was and killed him for what he did. That's actually, I'm sorry I didn't put that into the episode, I guess. Yeah, that's fair, yeah. That's a fair, I mean, I guess I would just be saying, what if this happened? Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of evidence to back it up, but clearly the man had a lot of uh, bad bad blood with a lot of different people. I mean, this is a clear motive. I yeah. mean, there's motive there, but there's not a lot to back it up. I guess I couldn't just be like, what if this happened? I guess I could have. I have said, what if it was aliens? This is a long one. Actually, I feel like this one you should read from Cassidy Cook. From Cassidy Cook. It's on, long though. Okay, I'll go with it. Should we put, I wonder if you, you should, put some music should we this? put the Goldsworth theme under this? Oh, sure. Let's bring up Goldsworth theme from Cassidy Cook on Facebook, Q&A. What if Ricky Goldsworth is a demon Ryan has picked up along their supernatural adventures? But really, let's entertain the possibility. We've known Shane is an unfiltered skeptic for a long time, but perhaps a demon's power is diminished against the non-believers. So Shane and Ryan go on these otherworldly escapades and a demon creeps in, into Ryan. <laughs> the demon lays in wait, biding, biding his time? Yeah. Bidding his time? Biding his time. All right, biding his time. In Ryan, he finds a flicker of sin. Ricky Goldsworth. Knowing Ryan's heart, the demon takes on the persona of Ricky Goldsworth, the free ballin', guns blazing outlaw. <laughs> free ballin'? <laughs> the free ballin'? Wait, what the fuck? Free wheelin'? I, free ballin' is a very different image in my head. Free ballin' means you don't wear any underwear. I do. Maybe Ricky doesn't. We'll get back into this. The free ballin' <laughs> guns blazing outlaw living off the chain. <laughs> this is well written. Quite, quite, okay. Shades of horsely. Yeah. The demon, slowly at first, as is evident in this video, begins to overtake Ryan. 
Bergara cannot understand what's happening to him. His mood and attitude change at the drop of a hat, but he can't find the cause. He has no idea of the demon's presence, but he soon will. Ricky Goldsworth will overtake him. Ricky Goldsworth will overtake us all. Hashtag Bugars, hashtag Shaniacs, hashtag love you both, hashtag I'm, I'm indecisive okay, hashtag BuzzFeed Unsolved. No, I don't think he'd ever overtake anything. You're doing it again. What are you talking about? It's, uh, it's getting creepy. What? What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, next question from Gramtown. Outside loving van. I'm tired of seeing Ryan hate on the hot dogga so much. If you don't like it, you can just, you know, fuck off. <laughs> Pretty funny. No. I think it's a Even steaming... Even though you created it all. I didn't create it all. You gave, I it think the, it's... you gave it the little kick it needed. You kicked it and sent it into orbit. And now it's just going on forever. Never ending. As an anarchist once said, madness is like gravity, all it really needs. It's just a little push. Thomas Byrne from Facebook, for the Q&A, why did the police believe that the shot was from an embrace? Why could it have not just been a shot from the back? P uh, there's probably I, I some think, sort of... Yeah, I mean, like, I think when you're investigating a case, you start to have your favorite theories or beliefs. They also probably had some sort of ballistics person or uh, someone who studies the way bullets enter a body. Good, po good point, I mean, but looking at the, enter the entrance and exit wound, yeah. which was just this, and if his arms were up, my brain naturally does go to put your hands up, right? Kind of. You don't. Like, you don't ever go hug me. No, I don't do, you don't do that. that. <laughs> He's walking at him. Like I always this. do that. He's walking at him all jittery with his hands up, like fucking Pennywise. Hug me, please. Hug me. <laughs> This episode has taken a weird turn. We're gonna to go to the next question. Amelia Palmer Q&A. If Taylor was shot in the back, how come he was found lying on his back? And if it was a hitman who shot him, wouldn't they have tried to make it look like a burglary gone wrong in an attempt to cover their tracks? P.S. Please come back to the UK. Hashtag Shaniacs. Just because of the hashtag not coming back to the UK ever. Ever? Ever. Ever? Maybe. Uh, I could. Does that like you get shot in the back? You go. What if you just sort of do like? Oh, a, he's like oh, one of those. Oh. I mean, he was theatrical. Maybe he did like a very theatrical oh. death. Though, good point. If you, if, if it was a, in fact a fatal wound, you get shot in the back. You would think your lament would fall into your stomach, right? You'd think. I also, don't know. even if they're hugging, what the guy was like, hold on. And then if, let him fall. But if they were shot while he was hugging, that I understand because he's not going to fall forward then because he's hugging someone. So the guy probably, like, you know, pushed push him back. On. So he, sh oh, I see. You yes, know? yes, yes, yes. Maybe that's why they thought that he was hugging somebody. Yeah. Oh, that's me. We just Detective did. brain. No, you didn't make that connection. I just made that connection. You know what? We made the connection together. Hey, Ron, what's coming up this week? This week might be one of my favorite stories I've ever told on this show. It's a good one. It's a good one. It is a little different. <laughs> It is unapologetically nerdy. Also, I want to point out, I don't know if any of you noticed that I went extremely hard on the the voiceover narration for this episode. That was a, a tribute to Rod Serling. In case you were wondering why my growl was especially loud. Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> that does it for this episode of BuzzFeed Unsolved Postmortem. Make sure you watch the next episode this Friday and then send in your questions to the BuzzFeed Unsolved Facebook page and the BuzzFeed Unsolved Instagram page where we may answer your next question yeah. on the next postmortem. Yeah, probably. I mean, probably not. Probably not. Our weekly Q&A concluded. I now welcome you to the part of the oh, show we call right the even... Hot Dogga, a hot dog saga commissioned by Ryan Bergara, written by me, and adored to... by every single Detroit, viewer. And so if you don't like that. it, you can just, you know, fuck off. The jungle planet of Tamat Zero, a holographic corn is suddenly awake now. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm alive and not a kernel out of place, if I do say so myself. Hmm. <laughs> Maisie, to Minestrone, over. Minestrone, so do you nice. read me, over. So tired. Mm. I must have been thrown from the ship during descent, and if I survive the crash, it's highly likely that the rest of the crew is still alive. Looks like I'll have to trek through these jungles to track them down. Must get a move on. Never know what lurks out here in the, suddenly, from the bush, a noise. Oh, wow, okay, hey. Who goes there? Oh, no, no, hey, come on, nothing to worry about here. Just a pluple passing through. That doesn't make any sense. You phantom weirdo, show yourself. It's funny that you'd say that phrase in this. <laughs> hey, you got it, <laughs> you got it, corn. A pluple exits from the bush. <laughs> Just a pluple, nothing to see here. Come on, cut me some slack. Who the hell are you? Oh, me, I'm a pluple named Garce. Pluple's a variety of fruit native to this planet, and, I, and I'm a piece of it. So, you know, that's what I am, and as far as I can tell, I, I think I've answered your question. So hey, everything's good. A pluple, huh? Oh yeah, born and raised. 
come from a long line of plopples, sort of like a peach, but sexier and blue. My parents were very juicy and I am too. Fine, I'm Maisie. My ship crashed on this planet and I need to find my crew. Oh yeah, sure, I saw that thing rocket through the sky. Hell of a dust cloud where that thing went down. You saw it crash? Oh yeah, sure, I saw it. Had to be, uh, oh, three clicks southeast of the plateau. I can take you there. Mm, you don't seem trustworthy. Oh, oh, I'm plenty trustworthy. Plupples can't lie. What? Oh yeah, sure, check it out. Hey, Farch. Farch enters from the bush. Oh, howdy, Gars. Howdy, lady who's a vegetable I've never seen before because it's not native to our planet. Hey, Farch, why don't you do me a favor and tell me your name ain't Farch? What's your thinking there, Gars? Oh, the lady's all rattled. She doesn't trust a plupple. She doesn't trust a plupple? Yeah, she doesn't trust a plupple. Why don't you go on and help me out and give her some reassurance? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> what? If you if you if you think this is she's insufferable, meeting some aliens. If you think this is un inseparable with uh, with animations, imagine me having to listen to this without animations. This is this is literally the worst. <laughs> Anyways, continue your. Yeah, she doesn't trust a plupple. Why don't you go on and help me out, and give her some reassurance, tell a lie. Mm. Well, all right, but you owe me. Here we go. My name's not Farch. It's Troil. Help me out! Okay, take me to where you saw the ship crash. And so, Maisie and her strange new friends set out into the wilds of Tamat Zero. Will they find the rest of their crew? Will they ever reach Mike Soup's acquaintance and obtain the Bernoulli converter they need to travel to the Graxilon Quadrant and slip through a wormhole to rewrite history and save their friends? Hopefully find out awesome. next time on the Hot Daga, a Ryan Bergara production. Nope, 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 not my production. I started putting like a fun thing at the end here. Oh yeah, it doesn't Is that make good? It, no, it's, uh, it's more infuriating because it suggests there's another one. That's good, right? I don't know what the fuck was going on with Plop or whatever the fuck. Plopple! Yeah, look at the smile. No, it was, it was <laughs> we so got him. No, it was dumb. <laughs>